to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet My Savior, that cursed tree everyone to 714 this Thursday morning. God bless you. God bless you. It's so good to have you today as we gather together and start our day together. And I pray God's richest blessings upon you and your family and whatever life's travels take you today. You know, that intro I thought was really a pretty intro. I know not everybody likes the snow. I like the snow. So it was kind of a cool uh, video uh, as we spend some time in worship this morning. Today I want to, as we've been going through this week, we've been looking at the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews' focus is on the, super, the supremacy of Jesus Christ. And my text today is found in Hebrews chapter 5. And let me just preface uh, these last four verses in chapter 5 with the topic of this chapter. And it is really connecting Jesus as the high priest. It's a continuing uh, uh, conversation from chapter four about Jesus as the high priest. And now he, God is connecting it with um, the uh, priest and King Melchizedek. And although we won't talk about that today, understand where, we're, where these last four verses is really talking about how the writer is letting the Christian Jewish people know that uh, they're not where they need to be spiritually to even discern and understand these deeper truths of who Jesus Christ is. So he could not even dive deeper, although he wanted to. And of course, God is trying to awaken us to our own spiritual maturity as we grow in our faith. You know, God has never called us to live as Christians, as babies, but to go from being a babe 
uh, to a place of maturity when it comes to God and his word and the things of God. God doesn't want us to be uh, uh, ignorant of his word. And the things of God are spiritually discerned, Paul tells us. And so God wants us to understand, but there has to be a desire and the right attitude of hungering and thirsting, and you shall be filled. You know, it's putting with scripture upon scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept, as the scripture talks about. But in verse, uh, verse 11, he says there, so uh, in, in, in the prior uh, verses of this chapter, uh, there's this discussion about Jesus and the high priest and in the order of Melchizedek which was a king and priest. So then he says, we have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In, in the King James Version, it says your, your ears are dull. There, in other words, uh, this is really emphasizing that there's a laziness or a sluggishness to their hunger and walk with God. And could it be said that maybe for some of us, we can get to a place where we just become dull to our hearing. There's really no desire to, to dig deeper into God's word. And so in essence, uh, there's some deeper things God wants to share in your life, but you're not willing to go there. You're just not interested. And so that's really what the writer of Hebrews is talking about here, that they're incapable of understanding because there's really just no desire for that. And then in verse 12, it goes on to say that in fact, Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk and not solid food. You know, what, what the Hebrew writer is saying, and maybe let's connect this with one another today. He says, you've been in faith long enough that you should have grown to a place where you can eat the deeper things of God or you can understand the deeper things of God. But what he's saying here is that you still need someone to teach you the basics of the basics when it comes to your Christian faith. You know, and my question to you this morning is, is that you? Have you been in faith for, for some time now and you still have not moved beyond the simplicity of what it means to be a Christian? Yes, you know salvation, but do you know the depths of salvation? Do you understand who God is not and Jesus, not only as Savior, but as Lord? Do you understand the deep things or the Holy Spirit? Yes, you know the Holy Spirit resides in you, but do you really know the person of, of the Holy Spirit? And so these are the things that the writers wanted. To, you're still uh, drinking the milk when actually, after all this time, you should be chewing on the deeper truths of God that meet. You know, I truly believe that, you know, as you've heard me talk about that we in, in, as pastors have come to a conclusion and understand from what we have seen in the American church is there is an ignorance to God's word. And so since there's an ignorance, there's an immaturity because there's no depth to their faith. And so this is what really the Hebrew writers trying to bring and awaken to these early Christians that, hey, you should be growing to the point where you're getting the deeper things and not still dealing with salvation and, 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 and grace and faith. You know, there should be the deeper things. So he goes on to say uh, that anyone who, who lives on milk being still an infant is not adequate with the teachings of righteousness. You know, again, it goes back to those things that um, if all were still are spiritual infants, we're not going to understand those deep teachings. And the reason being, the Hebrew writer is telling us, is because it's become dull to their hearing or they become lazy or they're no longer interested in learning those deeper truths of God. And so then, of course, they're just stagnant. And honestly, people that become stagnant in their faith eventually walk away from their faith because they don't see no desire. They don't see no uh uh, hunger for it. They don't see no uh, benefit from it. And I think it's very important for us to understand that as we get to a place of understanding the deeper things of God, the more and more we realize how true God is and our faith is real. And so it's so important for us to understand that we should be growing and growing. You should be growing and growing in your faith. And then finally in verse 14, it says, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good for evil. You know, one thing that I've learned in what the scripture teaches is that 
as I begin to learn, I should grow to a maturity to a place where I begin to teach others too often in the body of Christ. And maybe it's in your life that all you want to be done is taught to you. You want it, you want it, somebody to teach you. There needs to come to a place in your life and your maturity that you have this desire to teach what you have learned. That brings maturity to your learning that you've come to a place where you now understand whatever And now you begin to teach that to someone else. But let's be honest, sometimes, and again, this is a known fact in the American church, we are a church of uh, consumption. All we want to do is consume, but we don't want to teach or give. And this is a shortcoming in the body of Christ here in the Western world. And so as, as the writer concludes in verse 14, he's saying, that this solid food will bring you to a place of maturity that when winds of doctrine come where others would be swayed, you will not be swayed because you'll recognize what good is and what evil is. And it's important in the day in which we live is to know what good is and what evil is because today uh, they're calling evil good and good evil. And so let me encourage you to, to quit drinking the milk. If you've been a Christian for a while, Quit drinking the milk and start chewing on on the deeper truths of God. Ask God hunger and he will fill you. He'll give you an understanding. And now if you're a new believer, well, go ahead, drink the milk. There's some wonderful nutrients in that milk in the beginning of your faith. But I want to encourage you as God's word encourages us, let us grow to a place of maturity so that we can disciple and teach others what we have learned and put into practice in our life. Amen. So that when evil comes our way, we can recognize it. And when good comes our way, we can recognize it. Amen. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you and praise you for today. Ask your blessings to be upon all your people. God, I thank you because Father, you've given us your Holy Spirit to give us discernment, Lord God, of truth from evil. But Lord God, you want us to to get off the bottle and, and begin to chew on the deeper things Uh, that solid food that builds our faith and matures us to healthy Christians so that we can speak into other people's lives, Lord God. And not only be able to speak and teach someone else, but to live out the scriptures. That's a sign of maturity, God. Not not, uh, quoting scripture, but living scripture. That is a sign of maturity. And help us all to live that kind of life, Father, that's pleasing unto you. Bless your people today. Give them traveling mercies wherever their day takes them. And God, I thank you and I praise you for this time with them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope you pray that you have a great day today. Take some time out each and every day. Study God's word. Hunger for God's word. Stretch yourself and God will give you the desires of your heart. He will feed you and feed you the great, great morsels that will build your faith to a place of maturity. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day today. Love you. See you tomorrow morning. 714 prayer.